Hello everyone, Argsy here. Welcome back to the Canadian Cattle Farmer here, Chilliwack, British Columbia. Now you might wonder why we are taking the rake down the road to a field. Uh, well, I'll tell you why. I had all sorts of technical issues with recording my episode this week uh, and I lost a bit of the footage. Well, I didn't lose the footage, I didn't have the game sound recording, so it was just me talking and no game audio. So I've decided that we'll carry on where we were. I'm not going to go back over and redo what we've done. But I'll show some of that footage right now in a bit of a time lapse. We've been in and sprayed that field there and we've mown both the clover fields. So as we head on down this way, I'll put that footage up. You can check that out and we'll catch up with you once you've seen that. And we'll be down here in the field ready to start some winter rain.
there you go, that's what we've been got up to so far. We've mown this field, on the other clover field, and got the weeds sprayed in the corn. Now, I'm going to hop out here at this point. One of the things I wondered about when we mowed this, I wondered if we'd be able to tet it. You know, I did talk about that in my last recording, which you won't have heard. But I brought the tether down, and we can't actually do anything with this. Uh, I've tried picking it up in the grapple there on the front, and all we get is clover. Um, it's not clover hay. There's no way that I've figured out how we can turn it to try and make it into clover hay. But I experimented with it. We brought the baler down as a bit of a test. And if I pick this up as clover, as it is, with the baler, it will ferment. And we will end up with whole crop silage, effectively. Uh, and we're looking at what we can put into the feed mixer. Whole crop silage is an option there. It's a filling option, effectively. It's not a requirement for our... Uh, for our mix but it can fill the same role that the hay would anyhow which is basically just to mean we're not just to give us something other than the maize silage and grass silage which are our two priority crops to get in there for the nutrients in our TMR so we're just gonna have to do that we'll end up with uh we'll end up with some product anyhow we are able to use it which is the main thing it's just not being used in the way I had hoped but anyhow it is what it is so I'm back in the tractor I'm gonna get this rake all unfolded Get set up and we're going to go around the field and get this one all racked up and ready to start bailing. Look we'll at that unfolded there. Get it all set up in just a second as it's unfolded. There we go. Right, so lower it down. We're just going to start heading off and you can see there you go. There is our windrow getting picked up behind us and uh, going to leave us a nice wide swath to be able to pick up with the baler, which will work out well. Like I said, not ideal, not what I wanted to do with the clover here, and uh, it hasn't worked out how I'd wanted it to. Uh, it could be a combination of things, it could be a clash between Maze Plus, uh, it could be a clash with the equipment I'm using, who knows, this might be the way that the clover has been written into this map, so we'll make do with what we've got. At least it's usable, unlike the alfalfa we uh, weren't able to use when we first mowed that. So anyhow, let's carry on, we'll jump into a little bit of a time lapse here as I windrow around the field, and uh, we'll see when we're done. We've got two rows merged into one pretty much across the field now, which will give us some nice swaths to pick up. I'm not going to bother going back down that single one. Uh, just pick it up as it is, unless we're going to merge it in with one of these other ones. So I think that'll work out pretty well. Now one of the other things I had talked about in the uh, recording I'd done earlier was we were looking at replacing our baler. And uh, that was going to be on the basis if we were going to do A, we were going to do square bales. Um, obviously. Now that we're doing the silage, we can use our fast baler, but uh, it is something on the cards at some stage we will be replacing the little New Holland baler. I think it's a little, reduced little bales, it not actually look that little, um, but we are going to replace that so we can get some bigger bales. Uh, we'll get a Heston baler of some description, not sure exactly which one, there's a couple of different, different options on the cards, so we'll do a little bit more research and exploration into that. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to take this tractor down, we're going to set it up on some course play and it can start doing the wind rowing down in the other clover field. I did mow the grass down in that field as well, and around that cow barn, um, so we can still turn that into some hay. Uh, I'm still trying to think about how we might do that, whether it's actually worth doing hay or whether we just put it into some grass, uh, into some silage as well, while we're out here with the wrapper. Uh, again, we don't have a huge benefit for doing hay because it is just a filler and we can use silage or... Uh, grass solage or maize solage to fill anyhow so as long as it's wrapped up and picked up as a product and counts towards the fill levels in the feed mixer it really doesn't matter so 
Anyhow, let's get on down there. We're going to get this tractor up and running on some horse plate, and uh, then we'll be back to grab the payload. So there we go, we've got the wind row up and going down here in this field, so they're going to be uh, merging all of this into some nice swaths for us to get back with the baler. So we'll leave them running here. Uh, I was thinking about the fact we're going to have to put the baler on the John Deere. Let's have to double check. We could use the uh, bigger John Deere, of course, I suppose. We'll see. We'll head back to the farm, suss out which tractor we should be running it on, and get them set up and uh, get on down and start doing some baling. The 40 series would have run it probably just Bailin needs 150 horsepower and the 40 series is 146 so uh, we decided we wouldn't risk it get the 8410 out instead take that down it's a good combo actually got these two paired up nice size tractor nice size baler so uh, let's head on down and see about getting our first bail made now I'm going to crank the size of these right up to the biggest I can make I can't remember if there's an adjustment on this bail baler might only be able to do one size but we can make them as big as we can get them wrapped uh, that work out better in terms of less bales to handle and uh, less bales to keep stored and obviously when we're putting them into the feed mixer less bales to handle at that end as well so uh, we'll see what we can do figure out the best option for us well it took a bit of a look 125 centimeters are the biggest bales we can do with this sucker so uh, that's what we're stuck with right let's pop in here and turned on and hold it lower it down see what happens when we pick up the first of this clover here there you go you can see it's just turning into clover so uh, I'll carry on a little bit take a look at the first bale once it drops out I should said that this uh, tractor was going to be powerful enough even it's struggling it seems to be struggling well quite what's going on there it's only doing six miles per hour I would have thought we'd be able to do much better speed with that here we are getting the first one wrapped We'll uh, flip in, in just a second and go and have a look at it. There we go, it's dropped down, so let's just jump out here. Go and see what this one says now that we've got that done. They're gone. Just completely managed to walk around it. So there you go, you can see it is just saying that it's uh, over Winrow. Look at the bale, 3,500 litres over Winrow. So, uh, not much else we can do, it is what it is, we can't make them any bigger with this baler, uh, we can't do anything else with wind rowing or converting them to anything else, so we're just going to have to let that ferment, you can see there it is going to ferment, I have done a test, it is going to become whole crop storage, so that is what we're going to be left with, anyhow, I'm not going to bail themselves, let's jump back up in here and uh, carry on doing this field. We've got a decent amount of bales off there. Of course, they are only 3,500 litres each, uh, which explains why, but if we do a bit of a tally up. I did forget to reset the bale counter. Uh, I have it in mind. I always forget it's there until the very last minute, but we can look in the statistics page to see how many bales we've made this session. I'm just going to run along this road. I noticed as I was coming along here, we had missed quite a little bit here on quite a lot. It's a little bit. There's quite a few bits on this swath throw that we'd actually missed, so. Might as well go through and pick it all up. Probably not going to amount to much in total, but 100 litres there. 100 litres there, 100 litres. 
somewhere else and uh, we'll be getting pretty close to another bale but there you go we've got just here and then we'll go and check on uh, checking those bale numbers all right there we go get things turned off lift it up and uh, we'll have a look to see how many bales are made across the field and what am i going to guess i always guess 34 that's my guess 42 even more than i thought look we're edging up towards a thousand bales total used uh, but look at some of these statistics here one million Liters of fertilizer, of course, that'll be our uh, slurry and that that we've put on. But 35,000 liters of seed, it's looking at some of this through here just while we're in this. It's quite interesting. It's looking at what we've played 124 hours on this series, and we're into uh, into year three. So, a lot of uh, a lot of time spent in here, but it's been fun, well worth it. Look at the eight, eight acres we've worked, 2,000 acres, anyhow. Interesting, interesting. Now I did figure out the reason the tractor was going slow there as we were going is it adjusts its speed depending you know, on the size of the swath to be able to keep the fast bale aspect of it working so that it's always going to uh, be moving rather than pausing to wait for a bale to come out. So it makes sense. This line adjusts your speed to make sure you're not overloading the uh, overloading the baler. Anyhow, let's head on back down to the yard. We might just uh, take a little, little bit of a deep breath, assess our options because uh, 42 three and a half thousand litre bales it's a good amount of clover 120 130 thousand litres or so um, but I might do a little bit of research and see if we can do something about getting a bigger baler because uh, I don't fancy handling a couple of hundred three and a half thousand litre bales either at this end as we're using them now or at the other end when we want to put them into the feed mixes so let's have a look and see if we might be able to come up with another option it's not like we're short money, so uh, we can ignore that and we can look at what could help us out. Well, I've been on the phone to the dealer and it looks like there might be some options out there that we could explore. Uh, they're going to try and have a chat to a couple of the suppliers, a couple of the uh, brands and see if we can get a demo down here. Something that will do a bigger wrapped round bale. Uh, it might not be the fast bale, it might not be something that we can uh, do quite as quickly, but at least if it's something we can wrap on the back of the machine, we don't have to run around with a separate wrapper that would be a big positive so we'll uh, do a little bit more research with the dealer see what they can come up with and uh, I think next time we are here we'll be running around with a demo baler but I think with uh, with the combination of uh, one and a half episodes recorded here merged into one I'm going to call it a day for now uh, we're going to leave the wind running down on that other field so when we're back next time we'll be able to jump straight into baling down there and we'll be able to get all those bales picked up and put into some storage and uh, ready to be used for making a little bit more feed for our animals. So, as always, appreciate you all watching. I hope you've enjoyed that episode, and I'll catch you in the next one.